Hi. In this video I would like to talk a little bit about the need for purity. Um, as I have mentioned in other videos, um, lower energies tend to, in a way, prevent higher energies from moving. So, in a way, we have a limited space in our energy body. And the lower energies sink to the bottom. And yeah, the more lower energy there is, the less space there is for the higher energy. So unless we are able to move away or transform these lower energies, there is really no opportunity for us to absorb higher energies or to therefore get in contact with these higher worlds or to attain a higher awareness. So this is one of the places where purity comes in. So if I take a real world example, it's not so much about um, in a way our aspirations, like I want world peace, I want all kinds of good and positive things. But if I am in a way in the end guided by my greed or stopped by my fear, I'm not going to act upon those ideals or those higher aspirations. So this is really an area where purity is very important. Because ultimately, purity is also about sacrifice. Getting anything is about sacrifice, or at least about making choices. Because you can't have it all at the same time. There is a limited space in your energy body. So you cannot at the same time be afraid and greedy and also be an altruistic benefactor who is willing to risk it all for his fellow man. Those things simply don't combine well. And if we want to progress spiritually, we need to make room for those spiritual initiatives, for those higher energies. And this is where the process of purification comes in. So we don't have to be absolutely pure, but we have to be pure enough. Because ultimately, when we are given a power or a talent or a responsibility, how we use that, um, how we will manifest it, depends on how pure we are. So if I have, for instance, a, uh, a strong, healthy, physical body, um, but I'm ruled by fear, I'm not going to use that body very much. I'm going to hide in a little corner. So what use is it that I have this capability? This capability will go unused. And when a talent is not utilized, that is actually a negative karma, which will ensure that you won't get that talent in the next time. So also to even prevent us losing what we have, we need to be able to act to unleash our full potential. And this is also why purity is very important. So one of the uh, examples can be also the martyrdom. People who are willing to die for their religion, for their nation, for their ideal. And ultimately it doesn't matter what you die for. What matters is that it is selfless. And by being selfless you can become part of something bigger. So you can become part of that religion or that country or that group or that ideal. And that means that you will have a home outside of your own body if you do die. So martyrdom is not just an illusion. It doesn't mean that anybody who um, yeah, dies a violent death um, is um, yeah, going to hell um, because of the violent life they lived. Martyrdom is real. It can happen. It doesn't always happen. And this is also because of purity. So if I am, for instance, a person who is disappointed in my life, I have no options, no job, no money, no girlfriend, uh, nothing to look forward to, and I'm filled with envy. I'm envious to people who have it and while I don't. And out of this envy, there comes an anger, a resentment, a hatred even. 
and this hatred is of course blocked because society doesn't accept violence but hey if I do it in the name of socialism or nationalism or something else gosh then I am allowed and even encouraged to express these lower vibrations and people say I'll be a martyr if I do this for the cause and yeah if I take all that hatred all that envy and I commit a violent act I can believe that I will be a martyr and I will go to serve my greater ideal in my afterlife or in my following incarnations but that's not actually the case Martyrdom requires purity. Martyrdom is not an excuse. It's also not a shortcut to get to where you want to be. For a martyr to really become part of that thing he serves, it's not enough for them to die for the cause. They have to live for the cause as well. It is a lot harder to live for a cause than to die for a cause. Dying for a cause can take moments, a few days, even a few hours. In extreme ways, maybe a month or two, but living for a cause will take years. It will take discipline. It will take sacrifice. It will take hard work. And that is what will be rewarded. There are no shortcuts to a better life by simply dying so if you look for instance at a person a policeman he lives to serve society he lives to keep other people safe he lives to preserve justice within society and should he die in the course of his duty i'm pretty sure that he will be recognized by the powers which serve society which serve harmony, which serve justice, which serve peace as one of them. And he would have died a martyr. And even if he would die in his bed, he will be recognized as one of them for a, a, lifelong, a lifelong service. And he will be taken up and join beings like himself. And it's the same with nationalist martyrs or religious martyrs. They become part of something else, something bigger than them. And this is a religion in itself to, in a way, purify yourself so you can become a part of something greater, whether that is an organization or an ideal or a religion. Ultimately, it does not matter. What matters, it is something greater than you. It is a step up because the thing you serve is greater is higher than you can ever attain so in that sense martyrdom or more precisely a life of service which will lead to martyrdom is a very viable path for which purity is an essential because if we take this example of the policeman so it is possible that he is a policeman out of desire for power, for authority, um, out of a desire to have yeah, a kind of a, a weapon on him to be respected. It can be that he hates criminals or hates other people who he considers dangerous or parasites. And if he acts out of these motivations, in a way, he may wear the uniform of a policeman, but he is not one with the protectors of society. He is not a guardian angel. He is a vigilante. And a vigilante may follow the law, may be given authority by the state, but in his heart, he is not a servant. He is a servant to himself, to his own impulses, to his own desires whether he's conscious of them or not. 
So it is very necessary not just to act in the way you should act, but also to be the way you should be. And this is where purity comes in. Everybody can put up an act for weeks, months, sometimes even years. And that act can help you to move towards your ideal, to build up positive habits which would suit your ideal, but they're not enough to transform you. So you can emulate a role model and act like it. And slowly but surely those principles, those acts, they can help you in your transformation, but ultimately you need a process of purification so that the lower impulses won't be dominating you anymore. Those lower impulses need not disappear, but they need to be governed by the higher impulse. So if the same policeman is in a way a guardian and protecting others, then of course if he sees an injustice he can become very passionate about catching the criminal. But passion is different from hatred. Both lead to rash action, to being energized, to being focused, obsessed even. So outwardly it is hard to tell them apart, but inwardly there is a huge difference. A huge difference also where you will end up after this life. Do you will do you ascend to become a guardian or do you in a way turn into basically a hunter and to be a hunter you don't even have to be human you can turn into an animal for instance and have even more senses to hunt even more time to hunt less restrictions to hunt you don't have to worry about morality or about law about society to fulfill those needs and because we reincarnate in forms which align with our needs with our behavior with our impulses this is why purity is very important to maintain our humanity or actually to go beyond our humanity because humanity isn't that great a condition it tends to be rather messy and disharmonious. So we need to ascend to a more higher perspective, to a more spiritual perspective, and we can use purity to do that. So now let's talk about the process of purification. So I mentioned a few things like, uh, in a way, not feeding the lower parts of yourself, which can allow them to weaken by going into a monastery or another form of isolation or um, limiting your intake of negative impulses. That doesn't mean that your negative impulses will be gone, but that they won't be triggered or stimulated as much. Ultimately, it helps. Does it help you to control them? Not directly, but it can keep you from doing wrong things. If I cannot control my urges, then it's better for my urges to be not triggered or to be weak um, by, in a way, keeping away from what would trigger them. It's a little bit like an alcoholic who shouldn't have a bottle of beer in his car or a bottle of whiskey in his closet. Because being near those impulses can re reawaken certain things which he cannot control. And the same way a sex offender probably shouldn't be working in a kindergarten. Because ultimately their lack of control uh, combined with stimulus will generate problems. Doesn't mean that nobody can be close to alcohol or close to children. Everybody has their weaknesses. Everybody has their parts which they find difficult to control and people also have parts they are able to control. So 
So if I would have a problem with yeah, controlling my violence, I shouldn't go in a profession where violence can happen, like the military or the police, because that will trigger my violence and I will do things wrong. So ultimately you need a person who is in control of those impulses. And to be in control means also that there is a de degree of purity in you. So if I can control my substance addiction or I can control my sexual addiction or my violence addiction because anything which gives a kick, which gives a thrill can be addictive and it can be video games, it can be sports even. Anything which gives a kick, caffeine, chocolate, um, beauty can even be an addiction. And that is not wrong. It is not wrong to be stimulated or to want to be stimulated. What is wrong is if the stimulation becomes a goal in itself rather than serving. So to be pure doesn't mean that we are without stimulation, that we are without anger, without lust. But it does mean that our goal is paramount and that whatever passion we have, whatever desires we have, won't interfere with that goal and possibly even better, will serve that goal. So if I want to serve God, then I should not steal from God. I should not take away anything which I am or have and say like, no, God, this is mine. You can have the other part of me, but not this part. That would be silly. That would be rebellion. Because if you have really a goal, a mission, everything you are should be available to serve that mission, to serve that goal, to be subservient. And this is what it means to attain that purity. That you're able to take all the things you love, you want, you desire and make them serve your goal, not yourself. It's easier said than done because we don't all have the same amount of willpower. Also the impulses which act upon us are not equally strong. Our Consciousness even is not equally strong. Sometimes people act before realizing it. So we are all limited in our purity. So purity is more of an ideal which can never be achieved, but we can always work towards. And we can all be on this ladder of purity, trying to get more pure, taking three steps forward, two steps back, because that's just how it goes. Because once we start unleashing our powers, also our weaknesses will manifest themselves. Anything which is opposing our goal will try to make us fall, will might try to make us stumble, will try to corrupt us. So how do you know that you're really committing to your goal? Well, if you get a lot of trouble, a lot of resistance and a lot of challenges. If you're leading a blessed life, well, then the chances are you're not really pure. Because purity is all about challenge. It is about not giving up. It's about struggle. And it's about accepting. Your, fa your fallibility. One of my favorite examples of this is Jesus Christ himself, who's asking, Father, please, can this bitter cup not pass me by? Because even he, who is way more pure than me, than anybody I know, also doesn't like it when he is being tortured, when 
he has to die and nor should he we should not gladly sacrifice our being because it is not worthless it is the most precious thing we have but that we are able to take that most precious thing we have and give it to something which is greater than us that is an act of purity it shows that our ability to serve our mission our goal our fellow man our ideals, our deities, our creator is the greatest impulse within us. Greater than our fear, greater than our greed, greater than our habits, greater than our addictions. Doesn't mean they don't exist. But it does mean that at least for a moment you're able to attain that state of purity. And that state of purity can only be attained by love. Because ultimately, we have two drives. We have our selfish drive to attain our goal. And we have, in a way, you could say, our God-given or Earth-given or Sun-given or Soul-given mission, mission. And those are two drives which are working towards the same goal. And I can attain my mission by being selfish. And I can attain my mission by being an altruist. And ultimately, the results in the physical world will be very similar. The mission will be attained. Um, I will be either rewarded or punished for having done so, depending on the view of most beings around me, whether they choose to appreciate what I've done or whether to uh, hate me for what I've done. Ultimately, it does not matter. What does matter is that if I do it out of a personal perspective, like I want to achieve this, then what will I get? I will get positive karma because I've shown my ability to use my talents, to use my skills and to do it in an artful way to yeah, achieve success. And what will that lead to? Well, it will lead to a continuation of those talents and maybe even higher ambitions. Will it lead to something religious or a higher incarnation or a greater brotherhood? Well, no, why should it? Will I be judged for everything I did to achieve that success? Of course I will, because these are my actions. But if I give myself to a more altruist drive, which requires that level of purity, will it be judged karmatically? Well, not so much, because ultimately you're the tool. You're the tool of the greater power, which is using you, which has given you that mission. There is some karmatic, yeah, response to yeah first of all making yourself available as a tool second of all how well you perform as a tool but yeah a lot of the karma clearly 80 percent of it won't affect you because ultimately you're not the actor you're not the one who decides it is not your plan you're serving something else something greater and it will receive the karma for your actions Compare it a little bit to a person who killed somebody. If that person is acting out of their own desire for justice or vengeance, um, they will be at worst a murderer, at best a vigilante, and they will have to answer for what they did. But if that person is a police officer or a soldier and they kill somebody, who has to answer? The police force, the state, the government, the army. Ultimately, it is the organization which gave them their mission, which gave them their orders, and they're the instrument of that organization carrying it out. 
So does the rest the karmatic per yeah wait on them for having committed that act? Yes. But it is not as great as that of the lone killer. And this is really also the value of purity, that you become able not just to act out of your own perspective and out of your own drives, but that you become more and more able to be a tool for another power, a higher power. And that higher power will also be very much part of your life after this life. Because if you serve it, it serves you. You will be gathered up and taken to your brothers and sisters in the higher worlds where you will be taught. They will go over your life, they will have a look what you did right, what you did wrong, how you can improve and you'll be given a position. Maybe you will reincarnate again, maybe you yourself will become an instructor or a guide for those who are currently incarnated and fulfilling a similar mission, become their coach. So often an amount of purity in a person can be judged by the amount of support they're getting from their brothers and sisters in other worlds. So this is a way to look at the purity of a person, to see if they pray, if they perform a ritual, do they get that level of support? So to attain that purity, it always requires an act of will, because if we do not act, basically things act by themselves. We have all these drives, conscious and unconscious, and those drives will want to manifest themselves. And they will manifest themselves whether you want to or not. When we meditate we can look at all these parts who, which feel denied, which feel repressed, and we can try to work with them, give them a place in our lives, help them see the greater picture, what we are trying to strive towards, let them join in our efforts, and try to convince all these rebellious parts of themselves to do what our consciousness is already trying to do, to submit ourselves to a greater power and to greater good. And for all those little tiny egotistic fragments in ourselves, that greater power is not God or some higher ideal, it is usually the self. So all those fragments of your being have to learn how to serve your spirit your purpose. Just like all the fragments of the creation also have to learn to obey the collective, the earth, the solar system, the divine. So in a way our inner rebellion is just a reflection also of the outer rebellion. So if we want to fix the world we have to remember as it is above, as it is below, as it is within, as it is without. The world is a mess, yes, because we are a mess. And we have to fix them in parallel. We cannot create a better higher world or a better outer world without creating a better inner world and a better lower world. And we have to achieve this level of harmony through a process of purification. So, once again, I repeat, purification is not necessarily banning or denying the things which disturb you, but rather making them into tools. And first they have to learn to serve you, and you have to learn to serve a higher power. And then a state of harmony can manifest itself. And this is important for any undertaking. And especially before we, in a way, open ourselves up. So we always attract things when we open ourselves up. And we can open ourselves up in prayer or in meditation or just by stepping into a social situation like a party. Or going 
going to work. So all these opportunities for, for impulses to come to us, they respond to our state of purity. If I'm in a state of love, of ser serving my mission, those beings I open up to, they will see my love, they will see my mission, they will see what I'm trying to give, but also what I need to receive. And they can respond to that. If I'm not in a state of purity when praying or when engaging in any, any other situation, they will see that I'm selfish, that I'm angry, that I'm greedy. Um, and they will feel threatened by it. Because I do not have their best interest in mind, I have my best interest in mind. And they will protect themselves, they will act in a similar manner. Okay, if we're going to fight over this piece of cake, I'll get ready to fight. If you're going to yeah, make cakes with me, okay, I'll put on my chef's hat and get the mixer and we'll make cakes together. So it is very important before we initiate anything to achieve a state of purity. Because these are the seeds we sow and the responses we get depend very much on this.